Cambodia is a country carved by water, a wild land of monsoon rains, raging rivers, and flooding lakes. Life-giving water provides opportunities and great challenges for the diverse array of wildlife. Home to forest giants, specialist predators, and monsters of the deep. It is a land where lost civilizations have been rediscovered, and animals face a daily battle to survive. Changing seasons bring their own challenges and a tidal wave of life. This is Cambodia, the Water Kingdom. Lying within Southeast Asia's region of Indochina, Cambodia borders the Gulf of Thailand. Nestled between Thailand, Laos, and Vietnam, it hosts some of the most unusual ecosystems on the planet. Cambodia is one of the most biodiverse countries in Southeast Asia, whose wildlife and climate is ruled by the monsoon cycle. battered by rains every year. After the dry winter comes the wet summer. Dominated by a low-lying central plain that covers over three quarters of Cambodia, the heart of the country is surrounded by mountain ranges in the north and southwest and rolling hills to the east covered in dense forest. Running like arteries, rivers connect a mosaic of habitats as they flow from the highland forests to the central plains of Tonle Sap Basin and the Mekong lowlands. The ultimate waterway feeding these wetlands and traveling over 4,000 kilometers is the mighty Mekong River. It reshapes environments and fills Tonle Sap, the largest inland body of water in Southeast Asia as it makes its way south. Cambodia's wildlife relies on this fine balance between seasons to survive and make the most in times of plenty. The dry season is reaching its height Life here relies on the annual monsoon. And if the rains don't come, it could spell disaster. Wildlife is drawn to ever-shrinking watering holes. Feeding grounds bustle, but these can be dangerous places. Giant ibis are the national bird of Cambodia and were believed almost extinct until 2003. With only a few birds observed in neighboring Laos and Vietnam, Cambodia is home to 90% of the world's population. They normally remain in pairs or family groups, but the dry season is tough and they flock together in large numbers to feed in the shrinking wetlands. These fragments act as a magnet for many animals and their predators. Wow. 
Several pairs of eyes are better than one when your hunter could be watching. But venturing into the open leaves them exposed. to keep alert. The clouded leopard has a taste for wild pigs. But even for predators, these are uncertain times. Cambodia's transformation begins in May, when the southwestern monsoon finally arrives, delivering three quarters of the annual rainfall. It lasts for six months and feeds the eastern plains landscape. This complex mosaic of habitats covers over 30,000 square kilometers and holds a rich biodiversity of wildlife. These forests hide giants. The Eastern Plains landscape harbors the largest population of these beasts in Cambodia. Weighing in at around three tons, nothing stands in the way of an Asian elephant on a mission. These nomadic creatures must reach fresh feeding grounds. The rains have brought new growth to the forest, but Asian elephants rarely forage in one area for long. They can spend up to 16 hours feeding a day. So finding a haven of potential food and water is essential, and this group must journey deep into the forest But the deluge of rain also presents challenges. One wrong foot could bring real danger for this female. Containing over 100,000 mussels, her trunk is used for a variety of tasks. Eating, smelling, breathing, vocalizing, and on this terrain, it helps probe the way. Acting as shock absorbers, her feet spread her weight across slippery ground. Stripping bark and leaves from fallen trees is merely a snack. These elephants must keep moving to reach rich feeding and drinking grounds before the day is out. As iconic creatures roam the forest floor, the canopy is another world. Bizarre alien-like beings patrol here. The painted faces of the black shank dukes are rarely ever seen. Only found east of the Mekong River in Cambodia and southwestern Vietnam, these forests are their stronghold and home to the largest known population.
Even in the treetops, there can be danger. So it pays to remain alert. A break in the rain brings an opportunity to forage. Unlike other monkeys, they find it hard to digest ripe fruit, so prefer it unripe. Their specially adapted four-chamber stomach, similar to a cow's, helps digest and break down this food. Being fussy eaters, they spend half their day foraging. But to gather the best quality food, the group needs to keep moving. And this is when their agility comes into its own. Scaling giant trees up to 40 meters above the ground. Long hind legs help the leader propel himself across death-defying drops while the tail helps maintain balance. Even the younger family members have to follow or face being left to the mercy of the forest. With no choice, he takes a leap of faith and joins his family as they head deeper into their forest sanctuary. Five months into the wet season, and the humid forests of Cambodia are teeming with life and food. Even so, the elephant's huge appetite means they must find a new haven to feed and drink every day. Smaller than their African cousins, Asian elephants can soon become separated in the thick, dense jungle. Having relatively poor vision, they depend upon other extraordinarily heightened senses. Raising their trunks, they smell the air for danger. In the thick forest, there are plenty of hidden hazards, so they need to keep a check on each other. Deep rumbling noises help them reassure and coordinate their movements. There are other ways that elephants can communicate. Using their immense larynx and unusually large nasal cavity, they can create low-frequency sound waves. Inaudible to the human ear, they can travel much further through the air and ground. These deep rumbling waves can be detected by herds of elephants up to five kilometers away. It's thought these can be sensed through their feet and trunk, giving clues to other herds' locations and warning about potential predators. As the elephants continue their quest, the monsoon rains have created rampaging rivers which flow through the jungle. The monsoon is vital for these evergreen forests' survival, and trees act like sponges, soaking up and preserving any water before the wet season ends. Seasonal water and changing geography creates a variety of habitats and homes to some extraordinary creatures. Needing to drink daily, the praying mantis makes the most of the wet season's increased humidity whilst blending into his leaf world. 
flora also depends on the new rains. A waxy surface on some leaves not only helps minimize water loss, but helps keep them clear of deadly fungal infections. Others have taken this to extraordinary lengths. The giant leaves of the elephant ear plant has a special trick. Covered in microscopic bumps of a hydrophobic waxy material, it traps a layer of air between the bumps and the water droplets. Preventing water from sticking to the leaf surface, it simply runs off. The rains provide the elephant ear plant with its very own self-cleaning service, allowing more of the leaf to gather light maximizing photosynthesis and avoiding disease. Like its namesake, the Asian elephant's ear holds useful properties of its own. With temperatures reaching 30 degrees Celsius, the highly humid forest takes its toll. Having a small surface area compared to their mass, they find it difficult to release body heat and cool down. Flapping their ears cools the blood flowing through them and in turn helps regulate their body temperature. Ancient migration routes have all but disappeared and only tiny pockets of forest remain for these elephants as they continue their search for food and water across hard terrain. The rains bring a huge biodiversity of plant life, insects and animals to Cambodia's forests. This in turn creates a food source for a huge predator. The mighty Asiatic black bear is sheer muscle and power. Twice the weight of an average human male and reaching nearly two meters from nose to tail means he has a huge appetite to fill. But a diet of largely nuts, fruits and insects means vast amounts of time are spent feeding. Similar in build and behavior to the American black bear, the two species are thought to have shared a common ancestor some four million years ago. But this elusive bear hides an astrological sign. One of Cambodia's more mystical creatures has a unique creamy colored patch of fur on his chest, resembling the crescent of a moon. These bears are often referred to as moon bears. Using his acute sense of smell, he hunts for anything he can eat. Capable of sniffing out grubs and insects up to a meter below the surface, and with claws up to five centimeters in length, he makes short work of any burrowing insect's home. These forests are a constantly changing territorial battle, and if a conflict does arise, he will have to rely on his strength and power. The moon bear is by no means the apex predator of these forests. Being opportunists, they will also feed on carrion, which comes at a risk. The Indochinese tiger 
has been known to kill bears scavenging from their kills. In these forests, enemies are everywhere. The wet season brings soaring temperatures and gives flight to one of Cambodia's top scavengers. A red-headed vulture surveys the northern lowland plains for the remains of a kill. An impressive wingspan of over two meters means he can soar, expending little energy. Spotting a potential meal, he must hurry, slide slipping and dropping quickly from the sky. White rumped vultures have already taken prime position on the latest casualty. Similar in stature to the red-headed vultures, their white flash on their rump earns them their name. Competition is fierce, and time is against them. Some species of vulture can spot a carcass from around five kilometers, so it won't be long before more arrive. The tables have turned. The red-headed vulture now appears to rule the roosts in numbers and attitude. As vultures dissect the carcass, their bulbous crops are expanded. This muscular pouch near the throat is used to temporarily store food. So effective at picking a carcass clean, vultures have been said to consume a whole bullock in just 40 minutes. More pillagers have spied the feast, and squabbles break out for the most nutrient-rich organs. For some, it pays to grab and go. A larger competitor has spotted the prize. The slender build vulture wastes no time. He uses his snake-like neck to penetrate deeper inside the carcass. Hygiene is critical. Featherless heads and feet allow the sun to dry any unwanted flesh from their skin and avoid infection. Soon enough, all that remains is a pile of bones. Having picked the carcass clean, a new ecosystem takes over. Insects swarm on the remnants. One dead animal feeds a whole new cycle of life. The northern plains of Cambodia represent a landscape that once covered most of Indochina. A refuge to rare and iconic creatures. They've been called the Serengeti of Southeast Asia. These plains are made up of forest, grasslands, and fresh water. Its diverse habitats and inhabitants 
rely on the monsoon rains for their existence. Heavy rains produce rich forests that create protection and food for an iconic creature. Indo-Chinese silvered langurs, the acrobats of these lowland forests. Long muscular legs and gripping feet make them exceptional climbers. Agility is key to survival, and they are perfectly designed for their world. Their thumbs have evolved and reduced in size, allowing them to quickly move through the trees. Danger is never far away. They must keep moving. Long, thin tails provide perfect balance on the thinnest of branches. Even from a young age, they've had to learn fast. They're also known as leaf monkeys because of their almost exclusively leafy diet. However, some leaves they eat contain deadly toxins. But these langurs have a clever way of dealing with this problem. A large, specialized stomach containing symbiotic bacteria allows them to detoxify otherwise poisonous leaves. Because of their leafy diet, they feed in the canopy. But lurking here are dangerous adversaries. Sleeping can be a risky affair, so this male keeps watch. It's a clouded leopard. He too is an expert climber. A low center of gravity and long tail provides excellent balancing aids. The sanctuary of the trees isn't so safe. But vigilance pays off, and his cover is broken. The troop has avoided trouble, for now. After a day of searching, the elephants finally reach the bounty of this upland forest. This haven is full of bamboo and fed by a now fast flowing river making its way to the lowlands. The plentiful supply of water produces some of their favorite treats. These highly sociable and emotional creatures use their trunks to touch each other, reinforcing bonds and establishing new relationships. After feeding, elephants love nothing more than scratching those tricky spots and taking a refreshing dip. As they wash and play, they sound their excitement. By late September, the wet season is reaching its height. The 
daily deluge of rain is relentless. And storms spread over this land like wildfire. A break in the rains gives these Cambodians an opportunity. The 1970s were a dark period in the country's history. The Pol Pot regime saw a time of mass killings and war. Ruled by a dictator, large waves of the population disappeared. The killing fields of Cambodia are now synonymous with the horror and genocide of this period. Cambodians have had to be resourceful to survive. And without enough sustenance from rice rations, people turned to eating the wildlife. Some say this is when they started hunting tarantulas. And when hunter became hunted. Today, this is still carried out by children in rural communities. But dealing with an apex predator of the undergrowth doesn't come without risk. Sensing seismic vibrations on the ground, she retreats deep into her burrow. Digging out the earth, the boy must be careful. She's more likely to try and bite if provoked. One isn't enough to feed a family. They must collect more. Clothed in sensory hairs, the next victim can feel the slightest vibrations on the ground and in the air. She comes out in full attack mode. Rearing up, bringing down the venomous fangs, she could easily pierce the child's hand. To this day, families still rely on the wild foods they can forage. Tarantulas are a source of protein the whole family will enjoy. After some slow cooking, everyone tucks in. No matter their age. The monsoon has a huge effect on Cambodia's many habitats, but none more noticeable than the central lowland areas. Waterways from the forested uplands journey towards the longest river in Southeast Asia, the mighty Mekong. Originating at the Tibetan Plateau, it enters Cambodia on the northern border with Laos. Traveling over 4,000 kilometers, it discharges enough water 
to annually fill 190 million Olympic-sized swimming pools. Bringing with it a tidal wave of life and supplying the world's largest inland fishery. Thanks to the monsoon, the Mekong River is at full flood and has increased in size over 16 times. This annual change means the Mekong has developed key ecosystems like the flooded forest, thought to be critically important for their rich diversity of fish, they also harbor predators. The murky waters are thick with sediment, ideal for concealing one of the Mekong River's monsters. The large flattened shell of the Cantor's soft-shelled turtle is different from most. His ribs are fused together, covered by rubbery skin. Able to grow to two meters in length, he is the largest of all soft-shelled turtles. The diversity of fish found here is perfect for this predator. And with a bite that can crush bone, an unsuspecting fish stands little chance. Despite being one of the fastest striking animals on the planet, the fish are faster. Camouflage and concealment are key for this ambush predator. Using sand and mud from the Mekong, he covers his shell and head to hide his presence. Spending up to 95% of their life buried and only needing to surface twice a day to breathe increases his chances of surprise. It's a waiting game. The pupils of his eyes mimic grains of sand, as do his nose and mouth. Survival is down to appearance and judging the perfect moment to strike. The annual monsoon rains have allowed complex ancient civilizations to flourish over millennia. The most powerful of all was the Khmer Empire and their long abandoned kingdom of Angkor. These temples were once filled with life. Built over 800 years ago, it was the world's greatest pre-industrial city. Its location wasn't chosen for religious or cultural significance, but for access to Cambodia's water. Nearly a million people once inhabited this ancient site, and their survival was dependent on the rivers and monsoon rains. They built a complex system of moats and reservoirs. The waters were so important, it's now thought extreme drought may have caused the downfall of this empire. Today, this ancient site has been reclaimed 
by towering trees and grappling vines. For hundreds of years, these roots have run deep into the epicenter of these ancient temples. And they've brought new rulers to the replenished moats and reservoirs of Angkor. Like the Khmer people before them, long-tailed macaques use the waterways and pools. They need to drink daily, and this oasis is in the middle of an unforgiving jungle. Foraging for fallen fruit in the water, their lives appear tranquil and calm. But macaques have a daily battle for territory. Led by an alpha male and alpha female, they live in large groups of around 60, providing protection against predators. It also increases competition for fruit. Each macaque has a distinct personality and position. They can eat virtually anything, and in some parts of the world have learned a unique trait of cleaning their food before eating it. Young are nursed until they're over a year old and it's thought that births correspond with the rainy season. Females provide the bulk of the care for offspring. The young receive nourishment, grooming and protection. For young males there is constant friction. and the monkey who ignores the pecking order won't go unnoticed. The bare teeth display is often the way to show submission. Young males use the safety of the ruins to test their fighting skills. Once fully grown, they will have to leave the troop and their water world, joining either a band of bachelors or risk trying to topple another alpha male. Macaques thrive here, but rely on the rains to refill their thirst-quenching waterways and grow the fruitful forest of Angkor. As the dramas of new rulers play out, its previous inhabitants have left age-old carvings depicting the balance between Cambodia's water, land, and wildlife. This is a balance governed by one of Cambodia's rarest and most revered predators, the Siamese crocodile. With only around 250 remaining in the wild, this is a species on the brink. This prehistoric crocodilian has mastered its hunting technique over millennia. Having walked with dinosaurs, they are so well evolved, relatively little has changed. Measuring up to three meters in length, the Siamese crocodile performs a vital role for Cambodia's wildlife.
scavenging the dead and hunting the weak. Fortunately for the deer, the Siamese crocodile has a palate for smaller prey. Fed by waterways, the mighty Mekong River is now at its height. This river not only shapes the land, it's even capable of changing the course of another river. The lake of Tonle Sap drained into the Mekong throughout the dry season. But with rising water levels, the flow reverses, flooding the Great Lake. Over two thirds of the lake's new waters have come from the mighty river, and Tonlisap's area increases sixfold. It's now over 10 times the size of New York and the largest lake in Southeast Asia. This epic seasonal flood creates magical mazes of flooded forest. Home to one of the largest species of snake found in the world. The Burmese python. Fully grown, they can reach lengths of over seven meters and weigh over 130 kilos. They are perfectly adapted predators with an incredible arsenal of senses. This ambush predator uses chemical receptors in his tongue to detect the scent of his quarry. Working in stereo, it can even determine the exact direction of the source. Heat sensors in his jaw spot the thermal signatures of potential prey, and this apex predator should not go hungry. But the annual flooding leaves this killer isolated in the trees, and food appears scarce. However, he has a trick up his sleeve. Burmese pythons are exceptional swimmers. Navigating the maze of channels is no easy feat but he soon finds a place to rest. Despite their excellent swimming skills, the distance sometimes can be too much. At full flood, he faces 10,000 square kilometers of lake. Without land, he seriously faces drowning. Fortunately, with the abundance of fish, brings a potential life raft. But he must be careful. Snakes are heavily hunted on Tonle Sap, and getting caught would surely be a death sentence. The 
stowaway finds his refuge. He is safe for now. The monsoon season creates great opportunity for Cambodia's wildlife, but it also presents great challenges, which the Burmese python has learned to master. This wild land of monsoon rains, raging rivers and flooding lakes provides some of the most unique habitats on Earth. Life-giving waters carve out environments, providing opportunities for some and challenges for others. It's a land where lost civilizations have been rediscovered and where animals face a daily battle to survive. Forest giants, specialist predators, and monsters of the deep thrive here. A tidal wave of life feeds Cambodia, the Water Kingdom. <laughs>